Hello and welcome to Hydrogen at Home. Today I'm going to um, show you a couple of different things. First of which is this cell I've got in the water here. Over here I've got some baking soda. Now in this water, this is tap water with baking soda. Um, I don't plan on using the baking soda for much longer. I want to get some lye. But uh, there's been a lot of talk about baking soda, about its health hazards and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think you just need to be, you know, just know the facts and know that there's a chance that it might not be the best for you and, and make your own decision. Um, for me, at the amperage that I've been running these tests and for the, the amount of time that I've been running them for, um, I'm not too fast. If I was doing it more than, say, 15 amps and running them for longer periods of time, then I'd be doing it outside. Um, another thing to, you know, think about is, I mean, even on the box itself, it's got a list here of the different things you can do with it, uh, stuff you can do with it at home for your family, and down the bottom even, it's got for your body. And one of the things here it's got, uh, it says, for a refreshing, for a refreshing bath, dissolve half a cup of baking soda uh, in your bath. Your skin will be left feeling silky smooth. So, I mean... But fair enough, there might be some gases that come off that aren't the best, and, and if you're doing these tests on a large scale, you should be aware of that. But if you can bath with the stuff, then it's, I can't imagine it being amazingly harmful. This propane bottle over here has probably got a lot more harmful toxins in that than the baking soda does, So, and I'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to try. This is actually wired up, not how I'd wire it up, but I'm just showing you the opposite first. That there is running on about 6 amps at the moment, dropping back slightly. I have got this on a charger, um, which is over here, which is actually, it's actually an inverter, but it has a charger feature built into it. Uh, the only difference I can tell that running a charger makes is that you just don't have to have as much electrolyte in the water in order to pull the same amps. That's about it. I haven't noticed any other differences. So there you can see, it's not doing too bad, but it's not amazing at, for 6 amps. <clears throat> now I'm going to stop this and rewire it, and we'll try it again. Okay, now I've rewired this so that um, both the negatives are on the outside. So now it's negative, neutral, positive, neutral, negative. Um, and we're going to see how that goes. She's running right on six amps. And that's what it looks like. By the way, this burner is on. And it's on for a reason. Just so you can see that I'm not going to blow myself up. I'll show you more accurately in a second. But for the time being, that looks like it's doing better than what it was before. Uh, I have two different theories on this. One is the spacings that I've done to the plates, and one is to do with the wiring. And I'll talk about that in a sec, but just checking that out. Still on 6 amps. Voltage is quite high, but it doesn't really matter because it's the charger. That looks pretty cool. Just while I'm doing this, that's how you can see. I'll show you the hydrogen popping in a second, but just for now, just to show that I'm not in any real danger, there you go. Hydrogen has the fastest flash point of any other fuel that we know of, uh, and it also has the highest uh, rate of evaporation or dissipation, whatever you want to call it, of um, pretty much any gas as well. I'm just cranking up the amps just so that we can see what it's capable of since I ran the other tests at higher amps. That now is right on, say, 8 amps. And that's doing pretty well. I'm going to show you this again. If I had this in a sealed container, you would need to be very, very careful. And if I was going more than, say, 15 amps, I would be doing this outside. But with this nice big open container, I'm not too concerned about explosions. It's 
especially with the set the fan on and not for running I'm not running these tests for too long. I'm not running them for many longer than two or three minutes at a time. Okay, it's creeping up. It's on nine amps now. Can't see the plate at all anymore. I'm gonna show you this more closely now. Just to show that there is actually hydrogen coming up here. See the colour of the flame changing? And you'll probably hear the pops going off there. As I, as I was saying, if this is in a smaller this is in a smaller container and the gas had a chance to gather into a spot you'd get a lot bigger effect and you'd have to be a lot more careful so that's on eight and a half amps so I'm going to turn that off while it's settling I'm going to show you something else over here is a new design that I've been working on the idea behind this design well, there's a few ideas. The first one was to try and do a design where I didn't have a bolt going right through the center, just to see what difference that would make. The second was to create tags that would be very easy to attach whatever cables I wanted to so that I can test all different ways of wiring it up. The other would be that I can cut these plates smaller, a bit at a time, without having to you know, make any changes to the framework just to see what difference that makes, because I believe that comes into play as well as spacings. Um, obviously these rubber bands here would be temporary, they would be replaced with solid ends. Uh, the other cool thing is that the plastic bolts I've been able to get are only really long enough to do, say, 16 plates. With this I could make a much longer cell without any problems at all. So yeah. I haven't had a hell of a lot of success with getting much hydrogen off it yet, but it, you know, I haven't been working on it for very long either. The spaces are actually cut, which is a good thing and an annoying thing sometimes because it takes longer to do basic tests that I can do quicker with the other cell. But it all will also let me be able to make spaces that are exact to whatever I want. And this flame is still going, by the way. I'm not going to run it for too much longer because it's probably not that good for me. So, so that's sitting right on 10 amps at the moment. Getting a pretty good reaction, especially considering the size of the plate. Um, I know a lot of you have probably been watching um, John Aaron's videos lately with his success that he's been having with his very small plate. I haven't had much luck replicating that yet, but what I'm doing here, I think, is along those lines. So yeah, there you go, it's 10 amps. I'll turn this off. Turn that off. I'll pull the cell out. The gaps on this are, are, are different. Now, the two theories I have about why I'm getting better results out of it this way the first is the wiring. That um, is, I believe, because most of the hydrogen comes off the neutral plate. Uh, and in this particular arrangement with these cells, there is only one positive and two negatives. Whereas the other way, there's only the one negative. So that could be one reason. The other reason uh, with, to do with these spaces that I was thinking of was that, obviously, the hydrogen bubbles are finer which means they only need a smaller amount of space to escape from the plate whereas the oxygen bubbles are bigger and if they get caught between the plate well from what I've seen it tends to you know stop the plate from working as well and even drive up the amp sometimes so what I've done here is where the neutral connection is I've got those plates closer together and then when the positive plate is I've got those spaces further apart so yeah it's a theory and um, so far it actually seems to be working better this way, so I'm going to explore this a bit further and see what happens. Until then, I'll catch you later.